Hey, what's up there guys, Joker here. Today's video is meant to serve as a follow-up to my video that I did earlier today with the R7-1700, the Ryzen CPU up against the Intel i7-7700K. There had been a lot of comments down below on that video that were asking about testing methodology and why some of the numbers may have not have been lining up with some other reviewers out there. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw this video out there for you guys as just completely raw data. So some of you may find this video to be rather boring because all I'm going to be doing is showing you benchmarks. If you want fancy B-roll and all of that stuff, then you can go ahead and check out my 1800X or my 1700 review, which I'll link at the end of this video, as well as down in the description below. But this really isn't about plugging those videos here. This is just about giving you guys the raw data, the side-by-side -side comparison between these two processors. And everything is the same that I had used in the settings for those for those videos. It's not This is not the actual runs that I used for those benchmarks, but I went back, I recorded all of this the same way that I tested in that video with the same settings, same CPU. So I've got the 7700K at 5 gigahertz and the 1700 at 3.9 gigahertz on the GTX 1080. That's overclocked to with 200 megahertz on the core additional and another 300 megahertz on the memory and all games were tested at ultra. So uh, hopefully you guys can just kind of draw your own conclusions here from the data on the screen. I just wanted to remove any sort of opinion or any potential bias that could be um, taken from just looking at this data. So it's really just all about you guys drawing your own conclusions for what you're going to be seeing on the screen here with the games that I'm going to be showing you between the two processors. Another thing I wanted to to comment on is a lot of people were saying that there that I was using a GPU bottleneck that I was forcing a GPU bottleneck um, because they saw the GPU pinned at 99% usage. Um, yeah, that's because I'm running VSync off and we're also using a 144Hz monitor. Or it wouldn't even really matter if you're using a 144Hz monitor actually if you run VSync off what that means is that your frame rate is not limited in any way. That means that your GPU is capable of being pushed to 100% load or 99% in most situations, ideally anyway, in a well-optimized game that allows you to leverage your GPU hardware. So with the GTX 1080 in a comparison like this, that is in absolutely no way a GPU bottleneck. We're playing at 1080p here. If I was to go ahead and force all of my testing to run at 4K, which would certainly make it a very, very GPU bound testing scenario, then yes, you would have, you would definitely have a point because the GPUs would be getting pushed so hard um, and being, being maxed out that they would become a bottleneck and a choke point for the CPUs that you were testing. But this is 1080p with VSync off. So that's why you're seeing 99% there. So I just I just hope that clears that up for some people that were were asking about the or not really asking kind of more or less um accusing really of me trying to sway these benchmarks in one way or the other. So that's why I just wanted to put this up raw side by side data and you guys can just draw what you want from it. I'm I don't think I really have too much else to say really um on this between the t between the two processors, uh, I, everything I said in the review still pretty much holds up between these two. As you'll see, that the seventeen hundred really does fall behind. And uh, actually, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna. I, I'm, I'm going back on what I said. I'm going back on say I was not gonna give an opinion, and I'm gonna stick to that. Actually, all of my opinions, if you want them, are over in that video. I'm gonna wrap this up now, and I'm gonna get out of here. But I'm gonna continue to let the benchmarks run, just because I want you guys to have you know as much data as possible for you to do with whatever you want. So uh, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get out of here, and you guys can just continue watching the rest of these benchmarks here on your screen. If you appreciated the, the raw data and the and the the reviews that I did earlier today, then please don't forget to go ahead and leave us a like down below on this video. And if you do want to check out those full reviews once again, they'll be linked in the description and at the end of this video on the title card so i'm gonna get out of here and i'll catch you guys next time Tara. pistol's great at close quarters okay. i can use this range to practice with it wonder if i should swap my pistol over maybe change my machine gun i could try out the secondary weapons I can use this range to get some practice. Reckon I'm about ready to begin.
Oh! 